is Jose with Triangle Systems and today I'm going to have a video for you how to set up a point-to-point -point link using our Altum AC radius. Pretty simple process, nothing complicated. Uh, we're going to need what we have on the, on the table here. We're going to need two Altum AC radios and two power PoE injectors. Now, first thing we're going to do is we're going to take our power injector and the power injector, the PoE, is going to have two ports. So these two ports are labeled. One is labeled PoE, one is labeled LAN. The PoE goes directly connected to the actual radio, and the LAN goes to my computer for the initial setup. After that, it will go directly to the switch. So we're going to turn them on right now. Plug into our AC outlet here. We will take one of our cables. We connect the PoE port. Then we're going to connect it to the LAN port, which is the one closest to the LEDs here. This LEDs will indicate the signal strength of the radio. Uh, so when we if initially turn this on, we're going to have two LEDs only, the power LED and the Ethernet indicator light. So let's go ahead and turn it on. There we go. So now we can see that there's two LEDs. On the far left is the green. The first one is the power indicator. I don't have a cable plugged into my LAN port yet. So the second LED, it's barely linking. So now we're going to take from the LAN port and connect it to our computer. The first thing we want to do is we want to set up our AP side first. So once I have it connected, we're going to come to our computer and we're going to check our open level preferences. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to make sure that our computer is in the same subnet range as our IP. By default, the IP is 192.168.1.1. We're going to make sure that our computer is in the same IP range only has a different IP of any other radius. For this example, my IP is going to be that one, and my station is going to be that two. My computer is going to be that five. So, do we have it set up here for us? So that five, subnet max, slash 24, and gateway, that one, that one. Okay. First thing we wanna do is we wanna ping the device first. So we get a good ping from the device. Let's stop it here. Now we're gonna go into our web browser. I'm gonna use Google Chrome for this. 192.168.1.1 We're going to get the login of the radio first, the first screen we get. Now, on the top left, we're going to see the radio model, the device name, and the firmware version, 1.73. That is the latest one. Username is going to be admin. Password by default is triangle. Now, out of the box, every radio, Alto Macy radio, comes configured as a client, WDS, US, point to multi point two. Now we're gonna change that configuration on the AP first. We said we're gonna leave this at that one, so I'm just gonna briefly gonna go over the network settings. Little interfaces. Now you have two options here, your WAN port and your LAN port. Your main management interface is always gonna be the LAN port, which is the Ethernet closest to the LEDs. That indicates the signal strength of the radio. The one opposite to it is the WAN port. That is used only for a hotspot feature configuration. Now we're going to leave this one alone at that one because we're not going to change it. I am going to go into the LAN settings and show you what's changing. Now, we go to network again, go to Wi Fi. We have two settings in the Wi Fi. We have our 2 4 GHz Wi Fi, which is our hotspot or AP repeater. Then we have our 5 GHz backhaul. And here we're going to click Edit. And the radio has default settings. So first we're going to change US country code. It's going to be a point to point link, so we're going to use US point to point 1. If we select 1, it's going to put us on the 5.2 GHz. Now it says here, please refresh the web page when you change the country code to see the corresponding list of channels. So now we do 
while this profile is going to be 802.11 AC channel spectrum we want to choose the biggest channel so we'll do 80 channel we leave it auto channels of power max now interface configuration this is where we select either this radio an AP or a station we said first we always configure the AP first so we go to mode select access point WDS we hit save and apply we're gonna leave everything default SSID can be left default as a user he can change it whatever he wants to be it could be uh, specific to the actual project to the path itself whatever it has to be but it has to be the same on both sides of the link so we're gonna wait for this to finish while you apply the changes you notice that on the top left you're gonna have a scroll wheel it's gonna keep turning until it's finished now after we do applying changes we we set this to be the access point WDS we're gonna refresh one more time The reason why is because since this is a point-to-point -point link, now this unit, the AP, has the field enabled for the point-to-point -point MAC. That means that this radio must have the, the, the Fireside's MAC address for it to talk to each other. So we have the field here. So here, we're going to give it the point-to-point -point MAC address of the Fireside radio. So we take our radio, the Fireside radio, and we look at the sticker here. It's going to say the MAC right on top of the label here. Let me show it to you a little bit closer. So right there. That is the MAC address that we see right here. So we'll take this. And we'll put it in here. save and apply with this process this radio now knows his far sides Mac address okay, now we can double check that this unit is mode access point WDS SSID is default and the point and point Mac is the Mac address of the far side radio now it's always best practice to do system reboot after making all the changes. Reboot that one. Well, this one's reboot. We can start and power out the other unit. So we get our PoE. We connect the PoE port, and we connect it to which one? The closest port to the LEDs. This is my LAN port. Now, when testing this on the bench, remember, they're going to have the same default IP. So we said before, for this example, this is going to be that 1, that 2, and that 5. So the first thing we got to do once we connect it and power up is go in here and change the IP. So we're going to connect our another cable from the LAN port to our computer's network card. In my case, it's a USB dongle. Now we're going to ping it one more time so we know it is active. Okay. So we're going to log in to the web browser with the default IP 192.168.1.1. Triangle default password. So it's case sensitive, so you should only use lower caps. Now this is a default unit, so it has default IP and default settings. First thing we do, go to network, interfaces, and change our LAN interface IP. We set dot two for this device. Save and apply. When we save and apply, it's gonna kick us out. And it's gonna appear the login login screen again. But now it's gonna be dot two.
So now we go to the wireless interfaces. Go to network, Wi-Fi. We select the five gigahertz interface, which is our backhaul. Again, country code is going to be back to US.1.1. Wireless profile is going to be 802.11ac. Channel spectrum, 80 MHz channel. We're going to use the biggest one. Channel will leave auto. Transfer power max. Mode. This is our station that will be so we don't have to change the station. However, we did change the country code. So we need to do save and apply. After 7 apply, when we save the changes, we now told the station there's going to be a point-to-point -point link. However, every time we change the country code, we need to refresh the entire web browser so we can get the point-to-point -point MAC or the Fireside Radio. There we go. So now we actually have the field for the MAC address of the AP. As we said before, where can we find it? You can find it on the label right next on the radio or inside the status page on the radio. We're going to take it from here today. Okay, double zero, zero one, DE, three D, and it's going to be six three. Save and apply one more time. After this is saved and applied already, we go back to system. And again, best practice after changing country code is to reboot the device. So we're going to have to reboot it. When the radios are associated, you're going to see the front, the LEDs, the LED indicators are going to be lit from the right to the left. It's going to tell you the signal strength. Now here, we have it already locked. So you can see the first two are power. Ethernet is going there. And there's no strength. So we have amber, red, so red, amber, and then two green. So that means a good signal here. So we're going to wait for this device to come back. I'm going to ping it with the new IP address. It's back already. I'm going to have a login screen again. Oh, lower caps. Okay, so ready is back now. So, I'm going to log back into it. And on the landing page, we can see on the station unit, we're going to have our status, link status. We have an RSSI, negative 20 dBm. This is pretty good. Remember, this is on a bench test, so here, odds are it's going to be really, really strong signal, so uh, you can put it facing down the table, lower the power if you want, and the TXCCQ value here, which is our second bar, second bar below the RSSI, is our signal quality. We want that as high as possible. So from now, I'm connected directly to the station side. I'm going to go over the air to the AP side. get to it. Good. On the station unit, 
we're going to see associated stations. Now remember, this is a point-to-point -point link, so it should only have one station associated with it, only one. You can see it here, and all the necessary information we need from it as well. Now we can ping across to that one to see the ping responses. So we can get across a little bit of problem. And we're done. That is that simple to set up a point to point link using the Alto Macy ratings. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe to our YouTube channel. Follow us on social media, and we'll see you on the next one.